Asus's new ZenBook S14 with Intel's latest Lunar Lake processor is a much hyped laptop. It has extremely long battery life, it has very minimal fan noise and it feels cool to the touch. It also has a new premium chassis that looks great. But should you actually buy it? Especially at its $1,400 MSRP? I mean folks, just one year ago on this channel, we were recommending ZenBooks because they cost $800 or less. What has happened? These used to be an incredible deal, delivering a somewhat premium experience for a much cheaper price than competitors. Well, Agency Error is here to investigate. She's going to take you beyond the hype and tell you whether this laptop is actually worth its price. Thanks Josh, I'm on the case. Asus has released a number of ZenBooks in the last two years, and we have them all in the studio. What we've consistently noticed is that even though they are their premium line, their build quality feels cheaper than competitors. Until now. I personally love the chassis update the ZenBook has gotten this time around. Its quote seraluminum finish now matches its larger S16 sibling. I really like the look and feel of this combined satin and metallic build. It looks stylish for using at the coffee shop and is also very fingerprint resistant. It feels well built for such a small laptop. Deck flex and screen flex is very minimal. It is very portable at 2.6 pounds, which is extremely light for a laptop with a 14 inch display. One thing we want to call out is because of how thin the laptop is, it's actually quite dense. When you hold it, you may be tricked into thinking it's heavier than it is. It comes with a pretty compact 65 watt charger, but you could upgrade it to one from our sponsor of today's video, Ugreen. Thanks Sierra, Ugreen has a brand new charger from their Uno range. This is a higher wattage version of their popular Uno 65 watt charger. You know, the one that looks like a cute little robot. This one though can deliver up to 100 watts of power, charging an iPhone 16 from 0 to almost 60% in around 30 minutes. This charger is just as well built and as cute looking as its smaller sibling. Its display uses facial expressions to let you know how your devices are being charged, i.e. fast charging or trickle. Like all Ugreen chargers, this one can charge multiple devices at the same time via its three USB-C ports and single USB-A port. And since it uses GAN charging technology, it is smaller than a traditional 100 watt one. Your laptop deserves a better kind of charger. Treat it to a Ugreen Uno 100 watt charger using the link below. With so many similar ZenBooks in the studio, we know these 2.8K OLED touchscreens pretty well at this point. This laptop's display maintains its wonderful color accuracy, covering 100% of the sRGB and P3 color gamuts and 96% of Adobe RGB. That means professional color work is viable. Its 2880 by 1800 resolution and a 14 inch form factor also means your content looks nice and crisp, including small text. Developers and anyone working with spreadsheets are going to love this. Where this screen starts to feel less premium is in its unimpressive max brightness of 370 nits and its screen door effect. This means you'll see colored pixels peeking through when looking at solid white content, like you often do on a website or Word document. Both the screen door and lower brightness are unfortunately common for OLED panels and laptops. I think one of the only OLED panels we've seen that doesn't suffer from these issues is the one in the Slim 7X. Due to the ZenBook's glossy screen finish and middling brightness, you'll likely find it difficult to use in a very bright room or outside. The reflections will be distracting. The trackpad is mechanical and not great. I think it's nice that it includes additional gestures like volume and brightness along the left and right side of the trackpad respectively, but they're only convenient if you remember them. If a trackpad is make or break for you on a laptop like it is for Josh, competing premium laptops from other manufacturers have more accurate haptic trackpads, like the HP Spectre, Surface Laptop 7, and MacBook Air. When it comes to the keyboard, the ZenBooks have taken us on a roller coaster ride. The 2023 models had superb keyboards for their price, good key travel, and a satisfying click. But in early 2024, Asus took a big step back with their ZenBooks with Core Ultra Series 1 and Ryzen 8000. Their keyboards felt noticeably low travel and a bit mushy. This keyboard is better, but still not great. The keys feel more responsive, but it still feels noticeably low travel. Josh found his wrists were uncomfortable typing on it. Ethan here with my perspective, even though the key press itself is a little mushy and low travel, I didn't mind it that much, so some folks will be fine with it. I also appreciated the size of the keys, the gap in between, and the layout is standard, so you won't mispress keys. Except perhaps the Copilot key, which I actually have mispressed a few times on this keyboard. Other than that, the backlight is bright and easy to read behind the dark keycaps, so it'd be comfortable to use in a darker environment. The speakers are excellent. It has a good balance of sound in a small laptop, and I was really surprised. It is very competitive with the MacBook Air, although they have different pros and cons. The ZenBook sound stage is fuller, and the MacBook sounds more dynamic with better sound separation. <laughs> Here's Josh to show you how the webcam looks and sounds. Here's how the webcam looks on the ZenBook S14 in excellent lighting conditions. As you can see, it's not great. The colors look super saturated and my skin tones are off. Also, you might notice that I'm slightly off center. That's because the webcam itself is off center. 
The ports on this laptop are pretty good. Starting on the left, we have an audio combo jack, two USB-C ports that both support Thunderbolt, and an HDMI 2.1 port. On the right, we have a USB-A 10 gigabit port. The only nit is that all the charging and display out capable ports are on the left side, which may be inconvenient depending on what you need to plug into it. Looking at the inside of the laptop, which you can access after removing its 10 screws, these Lunar Lake laptops all have integrated memory, Wi-Fi 7, and Bluetooth 5.4 on the chip itself. This is great as you get fast speeds, but none of it is upgradable. The non-upgradable memory may be frustrating, but laptops have had soldered memory for a while now. The only thing that appears to be upgradable is the SSD. On to performance. The new Lunar Lake chip in this ZenBook, the Core Ultra 7 258V, does better than comparable new processors in single core and graphics, but struggles in multi-core. Its strong single core and faster integrated memory speeds means your applications will feel snappy and responsive, but not quite as much as you'd experience on the MacBook Air with M3. This is evident in both Geekbench, which tests a variety of common performance tasks, and Cinebench, which tests the processor when it's maxed out. Both of these benchmarks also show where the ZenBook's performance in multi-core falls short. That is because these Lunar Lake laptops only have eight cores, four performance and four efficient. This is significantly less than laptops with processors from other brands at this price point. This means these Lunar Lake laptops will be able to handle basic multitasking or even some productivity tasks such as coding, so long as the projects you are working on are simple. But for applications that can take advantage of multiple cores, these laptops won't be able to compete, particularly for more complex workloads. Back on the plus side, these new processors have excellent integrated graphics. This is best demonstrated by our TimeSpy DirectX 12 gaming benchmark. Now, for most of our reviews that include comparisons to laptops with Snapdragon processors, we do not show this benchmark because it doesn't run natively on their CPUs and therefore makes them look bad. Same goes for Apple. But not including them here would be unfair because it's relevant that they don't play games well. If you want to see a benchmark that all these processors can run natively, here is Wildlife, which is based on Vulkan. You may have seen a video from Jared's Tech concluding that AMD Zen 5 processors with their integrated graphics beat these in real-world gaming. He tested this by underwatering two large gaming laptops. We are in the process of working with him to verify these results on smaller laptops with these processors. Thus far, in Cyberpunk, we don't see the same results as him. We see Lunar Lake ever so slightly beating Zen 5. When it comes to heat and fan noise, that's really a thing of the past with these new Lunar Lake laptops. For my use case of this ZenBook, which was casual use, like browsing the web and writing the script for this video, I never heard fan noise, and it didn't ever get warm. If you're interested in how it performs under a torture test, we ran Cinebench on a loop for 10 minutes. In this unlikely usage scenario, its fan noise is noticeable, but not that bad versus competitors. And it does get a bit warm on the keyboard deck. The underside, though, gets quite warm, so we wouldn't advise doing heavy performance tasks with this laptop on your lap. If you want a cooler feeling laptop for high performance tasks, the 7i Aura with Lunar Lake is the one to get. I played a couple of rounds of League of Legends on this laptop at high settings, high resolution and high frame rates. The experience was great. I did hear the fans going, but it was not overly disturbing and the laptop's keyboard deck only felt slightly warm. That being said, the underside did feel hot, so don't play games with the laptop on your lap. If you want more details about how this chip performs versus its competition and what Lunar Lake offers as a whole, check out our deep dive we just put out for the launch. It has all the fun charts and graphs your heart desires. Thanks to their lower core count and performance, we see huge boosts to the battery life in this new ZenBook. On an extremely optimized video playback test, it took nearly 19 hours to run out of battery. The only other laptops that come close to this are the older Yoga 7i 2-in-1 with a similarly low-powered processor from Intel's Meteor Lake, i.e. Core Ultra Series 1, and the Slim 7X with the Snapdragon X Elite chip. What's different about both of those laptops is that they are both cheaper, especially the older 7i, which is significantly so. If you're interested in which laptop is the best for battery life, we are currently working on a video going over this topic in depth, so get subscribed with the notification bell on for that one. One thing this battery test doesn't do is test performance tasks while on battery. You'll be glad to know that the ZenBook's already low multi-core performance does not lower any more on battery. It also does well in maintaining its battery life when doing high-performance tasks. After 30 minutes of running Cinebench on battery, it had 79% battery remaining. This is only beaten by the ZenBook with AMD's older Zen 4 processor and the MacBook Air. But keep in mind that ZenBook is massively aided by a lower resolution screen. Higher resolution displays drain the battery faster. We have a short on this which we'll link below. This leads us to our conclusion. The new Lunar Lake ZenBook is a great device for light users and even some professionals like programmers. It has extremely long battery life, snappy single core performance, solid integrated graphics, looks stylish and feels premium. Plus it's very lightweight and it just doesn't have the application compatibility issue of Snapdragon laptops that run the ARM version of Windows. Many specialist applications just don't run on that hardware, which undermines how good some of those laptops are. 
Anyway, our main issue with the ZenBook S14 is its sticker price of $1,400. It just isn't as premium as many other laptops in this price range. Its screen isn't that bright, its keyboard feels low travel, and its trackpad is mediocre. Because of this, we feel the Slim 7i Aura Edition is a better buy for most people. It has a brighter screen and a nicer keyboard, which we feel most people will prefer over the longer battery of the ZenBook. It also feels significantly cooler under load. The point is that at this price, there are several laptops that deliver more premium creature comforts, such as a MacBook Air with M3, or if your applications run on the ARM version of Windows, Lenovo Slim 7X and the Surface Laptop 7. With all that said, we think the ZenBook S14 becomes a good buy at around $1,200 and a great buy at $1,000. We just introduced a price track on our website, which should help you find out when it's the best time to buy. In fact, our website is where you'll find all the laptops we recommend for various types of users and where to go to get the best deals on them. So make sure to check that out. If you want to support the channel, become a Patreon subscriber or YouTube member. Or if you want to do something that's free, just hit that like button, share this video, and get subscribed. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day, and we will catch you later.